spring? Has it sunk in yet? What does it feel like? Uh, it hasn't really sunk in yet just because, you know, I didn't picture the match going like that. Ended up in a dog fight. Felt a lot stronger the second time, fourth time I wrestled him. Um, but, you know, I put my heart and soul in this thing for five years. And uh, I don't care how I got it. Six, five win, second round. You know, not my best match out there, but, you know, I'm standing at the top of that podium five years later. Thanks to all my coaches, my, my fans, my family who's the best, you know, everyone, high school coaches, club coaches, you know, I wouldn't have did this without all of them. They're, they're even here supporting me right now. Right there. Frank, just talk about the uh, opposite reaction from last year to this year. Um, last year I got killed and went back and trained as hard as I could for, you know, a year straight. Yeah, it took a lot, of, a lot of heat, a lot of criticism from that match, but all it did was motivate me. Um, really proud of myself. You know, I don't really like to gloat or nothing, but you know, I had a lot of shutouts this year. I dominated people, and I had a blast doing it. And uh, you know, I got so much love for these coaches, two best brothers in the, in the world, coaching me in my corner. You know, nothing feels better than that. Love. Frank, describe the, the energy level going into this match, the nervous level, just what you were thinking of walking into that, walking onto that mat. You know, it's it's really hard to even answer that question because, you know, one second I'm so hyped I'm doing, you know, jumping in place for 30 seconds, the next second I'm trying to calm myself down, and then I'm hugging everyone, so, so many different emotions, and, you know, you work so hard for something, and uh, when you get that close and you don't compete at your best, or you go out there and, you know, you get ridden for a whole match, you know, those things, those things hurt because you trained all year for that one match, and, uh, you know, just happy I got it done there, it's not my best match, but, you know, I'm just very excited to be part of such an elite company. Frank, he, he flipped you on your head there early. What was going through your mind kind of take us through that sequence of events? Um, well, you know, I wrestle Andrew Alden all the time. And uh, he always tries that move on me. And, uh, you know, I just thought, hey, this kid can't be stronger than Andrew, so I'll just cut across here. And I cut across and he hit the gator roll on me. And I was on my second, uh, back for a second, and I, you know, I started going over and I said, you know, I'll never let myself live this down. Right there in the middle. Frank, you guys had the team title locked up before you even had to take the mat tonight. Did you envision that happening? Uh, Honestly, this weekend? yeah, I did. Um, I don't know. This seems special. You know, it's it's. I can't even put my finger on it. You know, every single guy on this team is special. Not not only the ten starters. You know, we got thirty five guys on our team, and we got thirty five guys in St. Louis right now. You know, they drove seven hundred and eighty miles, some of them, to get here. So. You know, this team is real special, and I knew the potential we had all season. You know, it's still, you don't know what could happen at this tournament, but, uh, I mean, uh, as of right now, I'd say this is definitely an almost max potential where we're at right now with a few matches left. Frank, I don't, I don't mean to refocus the attention, but Nico obviously had a tough match in his final. Um, did, or did you get the chance to watch that at all? And you know, what are your thoughts after that, and what are you gonna, what are you gonna tell Nico after that loss? You know, we haven't really got a chance to s sit down and talk that much, just because we've both been so focused, and you don't want to look ahead or nothing. You know, I texted him last night because I was, you know, I was thinking about it all night how special it was when Nico did. You know, when we first got here, I didn't know what to think about that kid, <laughs> to be honest with you. And uh, and that now, you know, I love him. I want to stay with Penn State just so I can watch Nico and ride his success with him. You know, that kid works harder than anybody, you know, he's, uh, he asks me to drill every day after practice. Anything, you know, that kid wants, he'll get it. Go here to right. Frank, Frank, you came into this tournament without any kind of knee wrap, pretty healthy. There was a point there where, I believe in earlier rounds, where you kind of tweaked something. Um, Kale said you were fine, I know you would say that. Now that this is over, I mean, would you care to elaborate on that? Maybe what changes you had to make to your game to, to kind of deal with what happened? You know, uh, this end of my second match, I got real tired. And uh, it was a dog fight, and that kid was, you know, buzzsaw. And there was 10 seconds left, and I've turned my knee down and kicked away hundreds of times. And for some reason, when I did it that time, uh, inside of my knee, my whole knee popped out. And then it kind of popped back in, and I didn't know what to expect. And uh, I just lost it, you know. I ran off the mat. I just thought, you know, it was all being taken away from me right there. You know, everyone was trying to calm me down. I was freaking out. You know, I finally sat down with our doctor. You know, he told me my whole knee popped out, but I uh, popped back in, and you know, it hurt this whole tournament. To be honest with you, I couldn't, 
I couldn't really even warm up. I just you know, I drilled a little bit and just couldn't wrestle. I couldn't. It's hard to lose my weight, you know. But uh, I got real down on myself before that quarterfinals match, and I remember, to be honest with you, I almost broke down, and started crying. I went in the locker room and sat down, and you know, Kale saw me in there, and he kind of gave me one heck of a pep, pep talk. And uh, you know, after I got done talking with Kale, I just went out there and killed it in my quarterfinal match, and you know, his. It's just when you hear when you hear something from Kale Sanderson, you know, you, you can't challenge that. You got to believe anything he tells you because, you know, Kale knows more than anybody. Just to follow up to clarify, you said that you you always were downward crying. Was that because it, you didn't feel like you were 100 percent? Like maybe you not you might not be able to give it your best effort? Or yeah, because yeah. Of uh, okay. You know, it was that. You know, it was me being a wimp. It was, uh, you know, just kind of. Uh, I'm so unfortunate. I worked so hard all year, and then this is going to happen to me. And I just got in the pity mode, and you know, luckily my teammates are tough as nails, and no one would give me any pity or sorrow. You know, they told me I was fine, and you know, just be a leader. Middle. Uh, Frank, any thought about continuing wrestling in freestyle with Nindy Lion, or is this truly your last match? Um, you know, it's something I've been thinking about for a while. Yeah, I haven't really done much freestyle, but I love it, and uh, you know, I just really hope you know, an opportunity opens up for me to compete in freestyle. And, uh, you know, this is great, and I'm going to enjoy this, but I know how competitive I am, and this eventually will wear off, and, you know, I'll set the bar higher because I, I love wrestling. And any way I can contribute back to this sport, coaching, competing, helping my best friends that are on my team, or anything, I'm going to be wrestling the rest of my life. Yeah. Time for two more questions right here in the list. Frank, just a follow from Travis. Do you care to elaborate a little bit on what Cal said to you in that pep talk? Or any uh, specific examples? You know, there was two things that... He said to me that it really stuck out. You know, the first thing was, get your head gear, put your sneakers on. We're gonna go exit you out of this tournament right now. He's like, if you're quitting right now, we'll, we'll just exit you out of the tournament. And the second thing he said that was awesome was, uh, you know, he's like, they don't make movies about uh, guys who have perfect seasons and win the nationals and everything's happy go lucky. You know, it's the adversity and uh, you know the test and. Uh, for some reason, when he said that, I started thinking that I was going to be on the Jersey Shore cast. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I popped in my head, though, and then I just kind of started laughing to myself. And I was like, all right, let's just get this. Any uh, further questions? One there in the back? You and Snooky. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Frank, uh, when's the last time that you remember not hitting a lefty high crotch and having to go to a straight single? I mean, we never see that. That's your go-to shot. You know, I think I've taken down every, not to sound cocky, but... Everybody I've ever wrestled with a high crotch, you know, from this summer I took down some heavyweights with it, you know, <laughs> took down some 97 pounders this summer, and uh, even my dad told my dad, he's always, oh, shoot the double, shoot the single. I'm like, dad, no, I can stop my high crotch, I'll never have to shoot anything else, and, you know, I got out there three or four times, I missed the high crotch, and he was ready for it, so, you know, I know I have a good single, though, I just don't like, you know, I'm so stubborn, I gotta get that high crotch. Any more questions? Frank, thank you so much. Thank Congratulations. You.